Hi everyone, welcome to our first meetup of the year. I'm Oshin Bailey, the event organizer at Jamaican Developers Community and co-founder of Osum Limited. This session is a part of our ongoing remote work series where we talk to industrial professionals, practitioners, and entrepreneurs in our tech industry about how they got into tech, skills and knowledge that you may need to know, and how to position yourself for remote work. In this session, we have Delton Phillips from Particle Present Technologies and Ryan Sterling from Vertis Technology, which are founders of their respective companies. Delton, I'm going to start with you. Can you give a brief intro of who you are, how you got into tech, and what do you do? It, essentially, it's just you know, working with our customers to um, help them to solve a lot of the problems that they're having. And then on the inside, working with the technical teams to ensure that we're actually delivering uh, the products and services at a, a particular standard. Uh, so that's more or less that. And then how did I get started in tech? It's a long story, but I'll try to give it a short one because I like to tell stories, but um, essentially I, I left six form uh, when Jamaica had its one of its, its biggest economic meltdowns, um, which was um, FinSAC. And um, my plan was to actually go to a university in the US because um, I wanted to be a pilot. And um, with FinSAC, every, my, all my plans you know, went to like nothing. Like I couldn't travel again, couldn't afford it, whatever. And so, um, but I didn't apply to university here in Jamaica, so my mother is just like, well, you need to find a job. <laughs> you can't just kind of stare and watch TV. So I was just like, all right. So, she, you know, she had a lot of friends and I got a job um, working somewhere. But in um, January 20, January, whatever year that was, not 20, in January uh, of the year after I completed sixth form, um, there was an ad in the paper a company out of India called Patni Computer Systems, which is uh, probably one of the larger uh, computer um, software development companies uh, in the world, in India, um, right now. I think they got bought out recently. But they actually um, put out an ad for associate software engineers where they would literally train you um, from zero uh, to become software engineers. And um, in that thing, they gave you a um, what you call that? Uh, aptitude test, you know, lots of trick questions and so on. And um, they basically said, all right, well, you guys made the cut. And from there, they didn't taught us, remember, we're coming out six form and we're doing the computer science back then. They taught us how to write little compilers and stuff like that. And essentially write software in COBOL. And, and that was that was the beginning of my software software journey basically so not the traditional way but um that was, i went to my six month training program and then I did like reverse engineering projects um which was interesting and this was this was in 19 something something many many years ago so so that that was my beginning guys so lots more to that but that's for another day okay that's certainly a compelling story. We actually have we we've had a couple of sessions with other community leaders who also got into tech um, via non-traditional routes. So, and I think that that's um, a good thing for us to share those stories so that we can encourage other persons who may be interested and daunted by the fact that they didn't do computer science in school or they're probably not doing this degree, but tech is still an interesting field to them. Um, Ryan, we're going to move to Ryan now, so could you also introduce yourself, what you currently do, and how you sure. got started in tech? Sure, so evening everyone, um, thank you Shane and Atifa for inviting me here. Um, so yeah, so I'm the CEO of Vertis Technology Solutions Limited, we're an IT services company based here in Kingston, Jamaica offering a wide range of services, um, cybersecurity, cloud, and application development line services. So really services um, centered around technology. That's the services we offer. Um, how I got into tech was really 
I knew that technology was going to be very important in how we shape our society. And I wanted to maybe be a part of that in terms of that impact. And I said, you know what, let me find some persons who love what they do and bring them in one room and offer some great services. So that's what I did um, over seven years ago. Run from strength to strength, met some great people, work with some great customers and just offering some wide range of services. I am I, I'm not, I'm, I don't have a technology degree. Um, I didn't go and get any in terms of illustrious start like um, Delta and did in terms of training. I uh, just really just love connecting people, giving people opportunity to do what they love and that's what I'm doing. So um, just thankful for the opportunity to do it with some great people each day and um, looking to do it for the foreseeable future. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. That's also another non another non traditional route. So we we're and we're also gonna make sure that this event is recorded and there will be a blog post so we can share these stories um, and increase the outreach so more persons can tap in and be inspired and hopefully join the digital professional the join our digital community so that we can increase or enhance the vision for tech in Jamaica. Uh, so we're going to move into our discussion. As we know, 2020, uh, we had the coronavirus pandemic and there is no country or almost no country. I think there's only one Caribbean country that was untouched by COVID and that's probably the only country in the world. And so everywhere businesses had to make do make compromises and those who probably were running away from tech for a long while had to go the route of considering remote work not a lot of us may be doing it the way it should be done but that's why we're going to be having these discussions um, as we go along to make sure that we understand what remote work should be and what's the best way to go about it so, or, um, so I'm going to pose a question to both of you for the panel discussions. That's how the questions will go. And we'll just answer those of us who have questions. You can raise your hands in the chat. You can raise your hands or type them in the chat and I will uh, present them as well. So or first, the first thing we want to look at is um, the traits and factors that out recruiters look for when you're looking for remote work talent. Um, what are some of the traits and factors that you're looking for in prospective employees in terms of soft skills, uh, personality, and so forth? Not necessarily the technical aspect as yet, but soft skills. Okay. So I don't want, yeah. <laughs> sure, I can go first. Um, I think one of the biggest ones that uh, I'd, I'd love everybody to understand is this uh, idea of managing expectations and also reporting reporting upwards and what I mean by that is um, the fact that you're not physically in an office with someone with the persons uh, they know that you're supposed to be working on something you know one of the things that you kind of need to keep doing is um, just keep communicating you know how is the task that you're working on going um, are you making progress? Are you not making progress? Do you need any other support? Um, kind of keep that kind of dialogue um, going all throughout the task that you're working on. Um, because what you don't want to have happen is at the end, you know, let's say you set a timeline that it would take you three days to complete something. You know, nobody wants to hear at 2.5 days that, oh, I won't be able to make the three days again. Um, and then you start to say, you know, 10, 10 dozen different reasons why it's not going to happen. So I think that that's one of the, the major ones. And um, so that, that helps us set expectation. And that's also the reporting upwards because stakeholders want to know where things are at because they also have somebody else to report to. So every manager or every CEO or project manager is reporting to somebody else. So the more you keep them abreast and the more context you give them, the better they are to actually form their own opinions and, and actually feel confident 
in, in your ability to complete the task. That, that's yes. my main one. Okay. Right. Yeah. So um, what a lot of for, for what we are, we are here at Virtus is working for working for persons who understand what it takes to be a part of a team. Um, what in terms of what they can contribute to team success. Uh, what is it? so we're looking for examples of where have they have in the past contributed. Um, whether it be groups, whether it be um, sports, whether it be gaming, CC, what about you know, look what how what they have done to say okay then work collaboratively as um, to ensure a, a, a success in terms of whatever they do. So we're looking for that, right? Um, we're looking that not everyone has great communication skills and some may want to just kind of be locked away and do what they need to do. But what we try to do is to kind of share with them in the terms of the recruiting process, what it needs to happen to be successful in a remote work setting. So we try to, in that process of recruiting, find out if we possibly training how they can get, because they're really talented persons out there but they may not have the necessary skills to be successful in remote work. So we try to find, okay then, which unpolished persons out there with a little training and nurturing can be successful in it. So we really look to see persons who can work well in teams. Um, that is one thing that we look forward to in terms of recruiting for persons in work, remote work settings, you know, and work uh, overall. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, not even, I think I think I missed that question, but I didn't un answer it properly. But I love those points that Ryan made, and um, uh, one thing that one thing that um, we we also look at is you know the person's ability just to be able to walk through a problem. So if there is a problem or a task that they have to do, can you just can you just walk through it in logical steps without even talking about the technology and I'd use this library, just step by step. Can you get from beginning to end logically? And once that's once that's there, I think Ryan made a point, which is, you know, a person might not be uh, the best, um, you know, in terms of uh, communication and all these other things, but if they can communicate that, how to get from point A to point B, that's a massive win and, um, and we look for that and we're willing to work with those types of people. Yeah. Okay, so we're definitely prioritizing persons who can work as a part of a team and be able to communicate not only where um, where a project is at and be able to say, I know this and I don't know how to, I know how to get here or I don't know how to get here, but also persons who can walk through the process of how they solve a problem and not just deep dive into the problem um, or jump into the problem from start. Okay. Uh, so I have a question from the chat. Would you hire unqualified persons who have a good attitude? So, and also to add to that, I'm gonna um, also ask, based on our previous work, um, sessions where we've, we've talked about um, building your portfolio and also presenting um, presenting projects that you worked on. Ryan mentioned looking at previous work that they've done in the past. Some persons sometimes feel like if they have a project and it's unfinished, it's not presentable and they can't include it in their portfolio. So how do you view that as well as uh, persons who may be unqualified for their post and but have the necessary soft skills or the attitude and are willing to learn? Uh, so I'll take that one. So unqualified for the post. So let me see. Um, I would say I, I don't. We don't hire persons that are unqualified for the post. So I want to hire someone that is unqualified. But let me just break that down a little bit. What we look for is persons who, and as I said, Latifa um, has shown in the past the necessary skills to do the task. So they may not have the experience or the three year, one year, two year experience that in particular a client 
has asked for us to provide them, right? Or possibly where we even in recruiting um, uh, put out there. But if they can in the in delivering a portfolio or even in the interview process show us that they can deliver and they have delivered in the past, we would possibly be would possibly hire that individual. So I wouldn't say we don't we, we hire we hire an unqualified person. We give persons the opportunity to qualify themselves for the role, and whether it be through providing um, a scenario for them to do to show that they possibly can do this, um, looking to them looking um, at what they have done in the past to see if they can do that, or, or just really just having a discussion with them and this and seeing what they can deliver um, for us. So um, that is so say unqualified, no, I wouldn't, but it has it has some you have to break it down a little bit there. Um, um, I think when men unqualified for for example, someone probably who don't have a bachelor degree in computer science or something, but um, probably have the right attitude towards learning how to code and so forth and po possibly can code but don't necessarily have the the paper to show that they're qualified it's um i think that's what the question was um given to us. okay yeah well definitely attitude um as i said attitude det determines your altitude right so if you have the right attitude um and you can deliver and show that you have delivered in the past then definitely you will said um for us a degree is not something that would say, oh, you have an advantage over someone who doesn't have a degree. Uh, what it is is just we need to see that you can do the work and that you can, you have done it, and show us that you will do it for us or whoever we are looking to place it with, as it relates to a client. So that's what we, in terms of us, really looking at more than just a piece of paper that you got from a tertiary institution okay um a follow-up question to that um regarding you mentioned job interview um i was like both both ryan delta and i was um you know last year pandemic well not last year we're still in it but um i was like 2020 switching to remote work affected job interviews and like what type of candidates then you tend to see it to you know remote job interviews and as it increased like the 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 amount of applicants and how do you handle you know remote work with interviews um yeah that's three part question if you want me to break it down i can go ahead but one the job interview from uh remote um for remote work uh, the second is geared towards all oh, the type of applicants that you tend to see and like um anyone that is you know applying for uh remote work what are some of the must have you would tell them oh these are the things you need to have whether it's soft skill equipment or so forth so you know you will take on those type of remote workers hi um yeah so i i can share so for us since the pandemic um well we're not as popular as virgis so that's the first thing so <laughs> so so you know pe people aren't flooding to get into our organization right um but uh in this um since the pandemic was started i think we've received a few a few applications um on our end um where we were not really uh hiring uh during during the pandemic period however the for people who are remote the actual um, procedure or the process for hiring is, is basically the same, which is, you know, um, you talk about the soft skills, those things are important uh, for us, the technical ability of the person to execute. So I spoke about, can someone logically break down a problem from start to finish? Um, these are things that, that can be done, you know, on a Zoom call. And so we actually, we actually would still do um, things like that because that's how most of our interview uh, takes place right now 
and um and um we actually um we actually are grading the candidates um uh, based on based on our rubric sorry about that at first um, based on a rubric, um, we actually are grading the candidates. So um, nothing has changed where that's concerned because uh, even in our organization right now, you have people who, before the pandemic, folks were sometimes allowed to work remotely and so on. But the key, the key thing is that personality. Like uh, we have to be in a position where we actually um, feel comfortable. Um, knowing that this person is um honest genuine and um is open enough to to um let you know what's happening you know even if you're not there so those, those are some of the things that i would say um uh, in response to your question or shame okay um ryan thank you Dalton. ryan do you have anything to add to that no it's pretty much the same right um we, before and during the pandemic, we had uh, uh, the option for persons to work from home. Um, we recruited persons who were not based here in Kingston, Montego Bay, out of town. And we conducted these um, sessions over um, Teams, Zoom, uh, remotely. So it was just a continuation of a process that we had before. Uh, recruiting through um, the pandemic was just, uh, as, as I said, a continuation of what we did. Uh, we we continued to look for talented individuals, place talented individuals um, in terms of with clients who requested these um, individuals. So it was just really a continuation of what we were doing before. Uh, we had processes in place to determine if um, these individuals would fit our culture and we work closely with our customers to see if um, they were looking for to fit their culture. So it was just a continuation of what we did. The pandemic um, made it where by we may not have possibly seen these individuals um, because we have team members who are working at clients um, and working with us that we may only see um, over um, a Teams meeting or a Zoom meeting, right? But we're not have been, we, have, we have not shared a physical space, um, but that is not anything new to us. So yeah, it's just a continuation of what we had before. Okay. Yeah, uh, Shane, one, one thing I want to, to, to mention um, is that whole thing where somebody asks about unqualified. Um, the key here is that um, in interviewing the person, you need to, if somebody doesn't have a, have a degree, for example, then I think the expectation is that you probably have a body of work or you have a lot of things that you have been doing to kind of say, um, you know, oh, this guy is, has been really been occupied. The worst thing that people can ever tell me in an interview is that um they didn't learn something and they um they have never gotten a job so what they're at home doing is just searching for jobs but they're not practicing they're not doing any thought of coding whatsoever like those people um yeah they, they tend not to make it uh through through all uh, technical evaluations so um as ryan said is you know, it's really a skill set that, that we look at. So even that the person who's doing it, doing a remote interview, you know, if you're if you've been doing stuff, then then in the interview we will know because you have a whole hour to talk a lot of stuff. So if we're at the twenty minute mark and you're out of stuff to talk about, then we kind of know. Say, so yeah, you know, you weren't ready. So I just wanted to add that part in. Okay. Thank you, Dalton. Okay, um, so the question. Yeah, go ahead. You can continue. Okay, okay so the, the next question we're going to get into is um, challenges. So what are some of the challenges that you think remote employees that are working remotely are facing and are there any routines that you think they may need to implement to help them be more efficient, more productive um, or communicate better? 
So for, for what on our side, or what, so what I say to persons working remote, right? Um, work is not a location, is what you do, right? So your approach to the, the task must take on a mindset that you're delivering on a service or a product for a client. Your clients can be a team members, your client may be someone external. So how you approach it should be why, um, where you have a mindset that you're going to deliver your very best work. So uh, yes, you may be doing you the work in um, your pajamas, but at least you have a location where you're, you're working um, as the best of your ability. So it may be in your bed, it may be at a desk, but however you're delivering it, put your, yourself in a, um, in a mindset that you need to be delivering very great work, right? So if you know that you don't do your very best work in your bed, do it around a, um, around a table, right? If you do your best work near, um, at a co-working space, go there because you can't work at um, at home because your relatives or anything is, is distracting you. You just have to approach work there. Some of the challenges though, you know, internet is an issue. So um, sometimes that can be troubling for for some of the remote work um, force. But it's usually, you'd have to just, if if you can have a backup. So if you know your internet's down or if something happens, what is your plan B? How do you go? Um, where do you go now to get that service? You need to invest in um, have, having a, a phone that can become a hotspot. Uh, that is something that you can invest in. Because what you need, um, understand that your client will say, okay, then you may be down for internet for a day, but they're not going to take it for too long that you're out for two days, three days, because they have a service or a product that they need to get out, right? Um, so that is really it. So you're, you, if you are a, if you're in the work, remote workforce, you have to treat yourself as a business. You have to carry, conduct yourself. Listen, that I have my clients that I need to meet. I need to have tasks that I need to get done. So put things in place that enable you to do the, be very efficient, right? Because at the end of the day, your efficiency will be what persons take out note. So whatever the challenges are, it's me, you're not the only one facing that. So you just have to make sure that you put things in place to address it as quickly as possible. Yeah, I concur. Well said, Ryan. Well said. Same, same here. Could not have said it better. <laughs> okay. Um, are there any technical skills that you think are a must have or technical skills that you recommend for individuals who are applying for remote work, mainly locally, but um, also abroad, if you have insights on that? Boy, let's see for the world. The world is, <laughs> boy, the technology world is so broad now. Um, the opportunities are, I don't know, it's just overflowing for anybody in technology at this space. Um, and there is really no competition. You know, in the old days, in my days, you know, it was like competing, or oh, there's this one job at this company that you go there and you see like 10 people, you know, or whatever, and it's like, I can't be that guy. But, but no, that's not the case. Um, I think some things never change though. Uh, I keep talking about problem solving. You have to be able to think logically. You know, um, if like right now, GraphQL, for example, for developers is a hot thing. Um, but when I when I hear about GraphQL, you know, in the past, it would sound like, whoa, what's this thing? You go on and watch a 10 minute video and realize, oh, it actually makes sense. It's logical what they're saying. So now it's, how do I start to build my things to utilize GraphQL? Um, you know, in a logical way, the way how how, how the way, way how it's expected to be used. So, I think really um, any area that you're looking to focus on, um, choose that area, um, look if there's a market for it, and then actually um, invest the time and an effort in studying and practicing and so on. I personally don't think that there is any particular area. Um, I mean, cloud is hot right now, but then you have to write code to run in the cloud. 
so then <laughs> the, the programming languages are, are also hot um so at the end of the day um there there are more opportunities than there are human beings to take up the opportunities is what i would say so find what you like um um the problem solving skills as i said the ability to learn and study and stuff like that like those things are like fundamentals you have to have those but practice 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 um pick any skill you want and then and then go for it i i really it's the first time i'm able to say that there is really no skill or technology that i would say if you don't learn it why are you getting left behind well i mean if you do not know and even if you're doing old stuff there's still a market for that um you can be in cobalt right now and you'd be a, a multi-millionaire in the us because there's still that code is going to be here for the next 20 30 40 years so so that's what i would say on that topic yeah yeah definitely in agreement with delton right so it's I, I sometimes i get questions what what is in demand what do you need what 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 can get me that job right and so we do have certain um language that we use here at Vertex technology but there are clients who have different various so what what i i, sh I share with with uh prospective remote um workers are persons just looking to um enter the, the workforce it's just focus on what as delta and said what you believe will give a great representation of what your skills are right um invest in that right be whereby if someone was to wake you up at three o'clock in the morning and say put in a computer in front of you you can do it right persons will pay for that persons will come and say okay then whoa um this guy or this this girl can really do this well let us let us see if um if we invest in her probably she can work with us or you can go there and show them that hey this language is framework this process will work for them right what they really want is to see that you have invested in yourself you have done the work you have um you have built a portfolio that showcases your investment in yourself right and if you can show that i'm telling you you can be a master of your faith as it relates to who you have persons coming and knocking at your door right so don't go chasing that job don't go chasing that um that okay then that is a popular language because trust me and another language will become popular in a few months time right and you'll have your head spinning trying to get um a handle of everything right you can be knowledgeable of some but just focus on what you do work best and trust me you'll be fine you'll be fine in this space hi i'm jordan from the jamaican developers group this video is a part of our meet and greet series if you like what we are doing or this video please like subscribe and click the notification bell to not miss any further updates if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave it below or contact us on our community forum at community.jamaicans.dev. See you soon. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I know that both of you use um, modern technologies in your business, but what would you say to the persons, and this usually comes up as a question when we have these discussions is, what do you say to the persons who may say that there are a lot of companies in Jamaica that are only most of the demand in Jamaica is for older um, technologies. Like, uh, for example, sometimes persons will say, well, if, I mean, the discussion here isn't limited to seeking a job with a company, but for those persons who will say, if you want to get a job in Jamaica, you should focus on the more traditional technologies or more um, all around frameworks such as .NET or using PHP or WordPress. Uh, when it comes to the discussion of technologies, what would be um, what would you say to those persons? So, they'll tell you on start, or I saw you on YouTube, so you can go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry, no, I just kept it on. Oh no, no, you go. Oh, my thing is, why limit yourself to Jamaica, right? Um, so you can be right here and do office services across the world, right? If the Jamaican business is not for you, then you don't have to 
just cater to them. Um, at the end of the day, you are not limited by your geographical borders to offer your service, right? So, okay, they're not, they're, they're, these organizations are not, are not um, looking to the, the technology and use the technology that um, the business in, in North America or Europe. Okay, all right, and so if they're not doing it, yeah, you do what you can do to find a look um, a business that will uh, will want your service, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I and what I say to persons looking, don't they will come around? They, they, the persons who are in the decision making process who are fixed on using a particular language, they will come to realize that there that is not possibly the best way to do it, but they, that's the way that they're using now. So you have to make a decision. Are you going to conform and fit in what they want to do? Are you going to do what makes you happy and what you can contribute in terms of the work that you want to contribute, right? Um, I tell, I say persons who are, who are coming with us into, I say, listen, this particular client is looking for these particular skill sets. If you would like to fill them, I'll connect you with the, the client and you and the client discuss in terms of what you need to do. If you if you don't if you don't believe you can be a very best with these particular um, skill sets, then don't apply for it. Don't go there. You're not going to love what you're doing, and the work is going to reflect it. So just move on and go to somewhere else, right? Um, it's really trust me. As we, as we said, as Delta said before, there's so much technology out there. There's so much um, persons looking for a particular skill set. Don't limit yourself to. Jamaica here. Yes, we're doing great things, but there are other countries that realize that once you do it, they're doing some other stuff as well. So it's really just where you want to offer your service. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that. And um and you know, I'd like to add though, one thing that we have to just like many times companies may choose to do, you know maybe it's not technology like you, you throw c sharp name in there like c sharp is grandpa stuff but um c sharp dot net dot net core um especially dot net core you know these are like first class um frameworks um c sharp the first class language um and and they are building and bringing in a lot of the newer technology right so the web sockets all these things are, are now a part of of these frameworks the one of the issues that um that companies tend to have and you know i face it sometimes when i have conversations is that people sometimes developers say no my need to throw everything we have and start use dot net core seven or you know they'll make up some, whatever they need to need to forget about c sharp and forget about power bi and use python because python is much better at data science and um you know you have to understand that when people a business making a decision there's a cost involved in that and a man will sit down and say oh i know that there are 10 people over here that know power bi and here's this one guy that said that python is the thing but he's the only one that know that know python right um because in jamaica we just don't have the the, the volume of skill set by the way that was one of the reasons why ppt standardized we standardized on dotnet and dotnet core was when i started the company because i worked in another company in another country i was in a lot of spring and spring mbc but coming back to jamaica i realized a lot of the client well, not realized i knew a lot of the clients were using dotnet dot um well there was no dotnet core at the time uh, asp.net and so on and i know that utech was teaching students how to write code in asp.net so logically for a company you invest where you have pipeline in terms of customers and also pipeline in terms of supply for workers right and so so you're gonna find that um but the, the i think the landscape is changing a bit because there are quite a few software development companies right now actually um trying to do different things um um you know i can say that on our end, you know, we're doing a, a lot of um, things that, you know, I was completely averse to in, in the early stages, but 
um, what happens is that the, the problem that we're trying to solve cannot be solved with some of the older languages, right? So now we have to start using um, frameworks and uh, development kits that support the problem that we're trying to solve. In the US, they're trying to solve, their scale is much bigger compared to like a Jamaica scale. So you're going to find, you know, not many companies are running about 100,000 customers trying to connect at the same time. Maybe NCB and a few other companies actually have that sort of scaling issue. So most of the companies are going to be like, well, we don't need anything else that can scale like that because we don't have these these problems. So uh, many times is the technology have to solve a problem. And if it seems like it's too difficult to solve, then, you know, the company is not going to want to do it. But as, as um, Ryan said, um you know the world is out there so you can you can if if the technology is what you want to work with then find a find a job online um to work with the technology or start a group like jamaica developers group that focus on python or focus on the language that you're interested in and get companies to be interested in it so um you know it's a it's a business decision for companies and um unfortunately um you know, nobody wants to lose their company or their job because they're using a new technology. That's just a problem that we're facing right now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Delson and Ryan. Um, so those were great insights. I'm glad that you guys addressed those because that happens to be a recurring theme in these discussions. And I think it's important for us to address both sides of the story. <laughs> so um, I'm glad that we could talk about that going to veer a little away from skills and go into the reality of remote work um, what are some of the metrics that you use um, in the remote atmosphere to determine whether a project is on track and is going to be successful or if it's um, if your work if your employee is handling remote work well Yeah, well, I, I can just quickly say the main thing for me, I'll just give my opinion, is, um, um, you know, can the person provide an estimate, an accurate estimate, right? So um, do they understand the problem? Can they provide an estimate? Can they provide feedback on where they are according to the plan, right? So, you know, projects have different planning levels, but at the end of the day, it comes down to at the task level where developer is the one executing the task can the developer confidently estimate how long something will take and then can they actually deliver on that i will say to you that the person who can consistently deliver on time um at the management level we're not so much worried about those people <laughs> i tell the honest truth because those people will communicate if they're having issues and um they tend to come in on time or just about on time. The the, 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 the problem is when there's the non-communication, um, you're unable to estimate and so on. So for me, the track the tracking comes down to that. Are you able to provide an estimate? Are you able to hit the estimate? And um, I know that a lot of teams do stand-ups and stuff like that. Um, we we would do it, we used to do it. Um, I find that it, you know, it, it it's a very expensive exercise um, to do as that daily stand-up. Um, it's basically somebody giving an estimate. He said five days. At the end of day one, you should be here. He needs to report up and say, oh, I'm on track. I'm not on track. I will need support in this in this other area. Um, so so um, Scrum Master, I need to, to get me some help. That's kind of the approach that that we take right now, and um, I find that that is um, that is successful, <clears throat> a successful approach. Um, so the communication is the key. That's that's what I would say, and that's how we keep track of things right now at this point. I mean, there's software that you actually update in stuff where you, you log on to this board and you see where people are and whatever. But communication beats everything. Thank you, Delta. Ryan, do you have anything to add? Yeah, not, not, not a lot, but just to say, um, as Delta said, communication. So what 
for my I don't really get involved in um, I may have high level knowledge of the projects that are being um, that are going on I communicate with um, my project officers our project manager to say okay then where the projects are um, everyone understands that they need to feed in to the project officer to say okay where they are um, communication with it is very very important if you're not communicating we can okay you can't build that trust that will be, um, allows us now to say okay then we maybe we have heard from latifa in in today but that doesn't mean she's not doing work but we know that okay then on day two she'll be able to communicate with us to say where she is right so that is what we we set in place now there as delta said, there's various tools to facilitate that um, what we do is just try to to ensure that everyone is plugged in and we can have an understanding of where each other is. So we have our little um, meetings or so online using Teams. Um, that's one particular way we use it. Or so just try to communicate and keep it open. And we try to ensure that if you have an issue and you deal, sometimes we, we sometimes want to be superheroes, so we're trying to fix it before and not before bringing anybody else in to help we, we try to say hey and not don't play superhero if you yeah i've I've met a roadblock you have tried it possibly step back try it again and if you're still having issues loop in team members to get it done or communicate that you need assistance so it's really the trust trust in your team that they understand what needs to be done there's an agreement what needs to be done they set benchmarks in terms of when we can put log in to confirm that we are on the right path and we get it done. We try to focus on getting the results that we want. Um, we, we, we don't really kind of limit persons to say, okay, it must be done um, like this when this. We just we're really looking to see, communicate that you're working. The trust will be there when we meet. You tell us where you are and get the results that we want as a group. Um, do, do you see, as a, a um, follow up, do you see any issues in terms of horizontal communication? Because one of the advantages with the physical space is uh, in terms of being able to ask for help, it's more on a horizontal level and not always on a vertical level. So we've expressed the importance of vertical com communication and reporting up and communicating where you are, um, whether you need help or not. But do you see any issues as it concerns horizontal communication among employees? For, for on, on our end, uh, no. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm used to seeing people's busy flag up on Teams where meetings are going on around me and I'm not involved. That's because they're all trying to work together to, to solve problems. As a matter of fact, I'm rarely ever involved in any problem solving right now. Um, so, you know, people people rely on each other to actually uh, get through things. Um, so, so no, I don't. I don't feel. But that goes back to the culture in terms of how you you hire the right people because, you know, there are some people out there who will not accept any help whatsoever. Uh -huh. They prefer to kill themselves before them. Kill themselves meaning, overwork themselves before asking for help or being forced to, to take help. Um, all thing is, you know, all right. We know you got a 4.0 GPA at UTech or UA, but. You just don't know this SDK, <laughs> you know. Ask that guy over there, and he can actually tell you how it works, and then he probably will save you three hours. And we found that um, in developing that type of culture, where even say, I'm the managing director and I'm supposed to have all this experience in software development, I'm just like, oh, how that work? I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> you know, like just, just saying I don't understand because we won't know everything. And so I find that people are very comfortable. Um, sharing um, internally um, and I've seen it in many uh, companies that people are even though they're remote um, you know once you have good relationships with people you know people tend to share so um, yeah it's not a you're not an island 
how do you advise newcomers to the space meaning uh if you for so for a lot of these persons they already have existing relationships with the other employees or other persons on their team but what about who are just coming into the space and may not have established these relationships do you have any advice for those persons Oh, all right. Well, I'll quickly jump in, take it, and hand it around. Um, I would say just kind of be bold in 2021 here. Um, when I started as a developer, I'd like sit in my own little corner and try my own thing. Um, come in a company, uh, somebody's there a little longer than you, say, hey, I'm new to the company. You know, can you, can you, you know, I say, can you mentor me? I don't know some people do that, but. You know, Jamaica, when I really, <laughs> when I really say, can you mentor me? It's so easy, right? So can I sit with you maybe for half an hour um, every other day just to go over what my plans are, how I'm, how I'm doing the job and stuff like that. And trust me, it, it, it work, it make, it work wonders if you, if you, if you take that proactive step. People, once you do that, people start backing you and pushing you more than you ever wanted to get pushed. So I, so I would, That time? Yeah, man, I'm here. That, that's it. Full stop. Oh. Okay. Oh. All right. Thank you. Oh. Ryan, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, no, I just say agreements. Listen, you, you, you don't ask for help um, in terms of to reflect your weakness. You ask for help to remain strong, right? So you join a new team. You want to contribute to the team. So you want to know how you can make an impact. So sit with someone, learn what they're doing, learn um, how they're doing it, learn how you can contribute to the process. And then be patient with yourself. Um, a great organization will be patient with you. And then show that you can contribute, right? Um, it's it's not something that sometimes we kind of put pressure on ourselves to say okay i want to i get this opportunity so i need to i need to do this now and speed is very important but you need to understand that at the end of the day you want to grow with the organization and you want to understand what it is so you you want to really just show that hey they made the right decision but that is also a part you need to know just contribute to that and know how it is so it's going to take time and um you you if you're at the right place um they would be welcoming into that uh as well, when we when new team members join we have a we have a we kind of have someone who shadows them a bit and say okay then here you're going to be working with um say delta and delta and you and delta are going to be working and yeah, you know, you're invested in each other's success and you grow and develop a, possibly a work friend and, you know, you'll contribute to the success of a project. Um, the same thing with customer when you're remote work as well. You're going to have to build that relationship with team members who may not necessarily be in the space that you're in, right? You need to make them comfortable to say, hey, they can come to you and ask for assistance. And you need to be comfortable in yourself to go and ask for assistance because at the end of the day, if the project is not successful and you did not do your part or you did not contribute, then it reflects on you and it defeats the purpose of doing well, right? So I say, understand that everyone um, may be an introvert or so, but just put on your extrovert um, cape or suit and do the job and then re re go back in your shell afterwards, right? So that's that's my thoughts on it. Um, a follow-up question on uh, the remote work teams. Um, what type of tools do you tend to um, use to facilitate remote work or distributed teams? And the follow-up question to that is, um, do you expect like a um, new candidate to have familiar familiarity with any of these um, tools like project management tool like team um, Jira or so forth so 
um, what type of tools do you normally um, recommend use or expect from um, remote workers? Anyone? Yeah, so the tools that um, is just really cool. All right, so at the end of the day, we have, you mentioned some there, right? And what we try to do is let first get an understanding if the team members um, understand these tools. So we use Jira, we use um, GitLab, we use um, various um, teams so I would not say that there's one specific one that will make you more favorable or attractive to a particular remote work opportunity. Um, but there are some that the ones that you mentioned that are good. We use them and they do uh, benefit to have a knowledge of them. That's for us here at Vertis or what I've seen and some clients use um, definitely have a list of what they want to do in terms of collaboration, uh, re remote work. But there, there are just like, there are many out there. Asana is one in terms of project. Right? So there's, there's many. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the main thing is that the candidate just needs to understand um, the value of them, which is, you know, this is how, this is how I get to communicate. This is how I get to update my team and my my direct report. You know, like, you know, once you understand the purpose of the tools, then essentially once you get into the organization, um, if they don't tell you, which normally in the onboarding, they normally tell you that. If they don't tell you that right away, um, my my advice would, would be, so tell me, how do, how do I, how do you guys communicate? Um, um, how do I update, you know, my project, um, how the project is going or, or if I'm having difficulty. So, you know, ask those types of questions, you know, kind of be proactive where that's concerned. And um, um, yeah, uh, any specific ones, I, I I don't think it matter at the end of the day. Somebody can easily train it to use a tool like that. So I, I don't think it matter. But oh, oh, big one, big one. I have to say this, you can, you can be on a call where everybody have the video on and you always have black screen. Negative. <laughs> right? So if 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 you don't like the video light, then I'd say I don't normally bathe before you go to work. Just go bathe that morning, doll up yourself and come for to the side, for the side already for your meeting, right? For the Yeah, later. yeah. Okay. Right, no so I, I literally yeah. got in a team for weeks this man was just black screen. So the company doesn't say no. You have to come into the office. You have to, because yeah. nobody else is seeing you. Right? So, so I said that. Okay. All right. Noted. Um. Thank you, Ryan and Dalton. All right. Um. I think two last question. Um. And then we will basically go into like open discussion. Oh, Shane, uh, one quick thing for a tool. Please learn how to whiteboard. If you don't know how to whiteboard practice at home, meaning mm -hmm. how to sketch things, um, to, to sketch out the problem that you're trying to solve and stuff. learn how to whiteboard. Just YouTube, how to do whiteboard diagrams, um, read up about it and practice that. It makes a major difference in the way how you communicate to your peers and it makes it makes it super, seriously successful. So you have yeah. digital whiteboard tools, you get, get one of those and practice with it. Yeah, um, funnily, I recently started using a digital whiteboard tool called Miro, M-I-R-O, um, but the value of it, um, just tapping on Delta, the value of it is definitely um, it helps you to figure out the problem before you actually start to code or work on the actual problem. So um, it gives a lot of direction and you can have discussion um, around that problem and the solution. Like I said before, you actually start doing the hard work. So um, definitely I agree with you there, um, Delton. Um, digital whiteboard or just having a physical whiteboard is, is to sketch out the problem. Yeah. Definitely a great um, um, direction to go. All right, um, 
well, one of the last questions um, is geared towards um, based on your experience um, of you know the infamous year 2020. Um, what were some of your major takeaway takeaways um, for remote workers, and how could it improve in 2021? Ryan Delton. Oh, all right. Um, <laughs> major major takeaways. Um, well, one thing, one major takeaway that we realized was that um, we could actually we could actually run completely remote. Um, we have not gone back to our office as yet. Um, and that was March, since March, people go in once a few times, but outside of that, um, realize that we can actually remote a hundred percent. Um, the, <clears throat> the major takeaway that I came up with was that we can actually still deliver solutions in in as a team even though remote because we were very used to whiteboarding sitting down um in a in a group and arguing out things and whatever um those arguments can still take place on the on the on the teams um um also realize that um you need to have a way to get people to social to socialize like um, there needs to be some outlet. We still haven't kind of figured that out. We used to play a lot of um, like Scribble IO online and compete. Then and then work start taking over and people just stop doing it. Um, so one of the main things is um, um, you have to find a way to still connect to people even though you're um, even though you're actually remote. Uh, the other thing is um, being able to separate. Um, work from work from home life like for me that's a big struggle that I have where you know in the beginning some days I'd go and not even eat lunch or just eat lunch and just right back on my laptop um, versus at work you could walk away and, and talk to other people and stuff like that so um, the final thing I'd also say is and I recently starting to, to do this is actually just take a day or two and not work at home like work somewhere else um just to uh keep your sanity um like yeah i so so those are some from a company point of view those were um some takeaways that i got in terms of being a remote worker but then the main thing i would say is that you know remote work remote work is here to stay uh, I think it's going to be here forever, basically. And, um, you know, the the keys for all of us to just um, do as much as we can, to, all the points that we made earlier, just work on those points to be ready for it. But, yeah, there there's really, I'm, you know, I, I'm drawing blanks right now. But, and I'm drawing blanks because the only difference between uh, last year and this year, not last year, but the year before and this year is, or last year, is that the people are not in the office and we're using Teams, but otherwise everything else is kind of the same. So it's it's kind of kind of strange. Uh, that was a nothing answer, but I'm sorry, I'm sorry you can go ahead. I, I'm kind of drawing on straws here. Yeah. Um, so really takeaway is just, um, ensuring that whatever we are doing as a team we understand that we still feel like a team so as i said we we we, we advertised we had remote work as an option right so we persons could work from home if they want um so it was not anything really much for us as it relates so okay then we had to put everything um, it wasn't a, much of a mind shift. What we found though is that persons sometimes want to come into the office, right? As they want that change, they don't want to just be working from home. Um, what we have found though that is really how can we help them to still get that connection as it relates to if they were right beside each other, right? So we put things in place that we have um, 
um, a meeting, a weekly meeting, which is not about work, but it's just like as a community speaking and sharing in terms of what we have done in terms of um, we have a little game session, just something that can say, hey, you know, um, last year was, a, was the first time I said, you know what, let me just take a break and just relax. You know, sometimes when you're working from home and they're going to say, there's, there's not a line, but you have to be just disciplined and say, hey, this is the line and I'm going to stop here, right? So take away from me, um, from me and the team, really see how best we can continue to be collaborative or we can strengthen the process because it's not perfect, right? We're learning as we, as we get, and I, I don't think there's ever a perfect scenario from work from anywhere, work from home. But the goal is just to ensure that we can work as a team, we're making our clients um, experience great. We're making our, our team members experience great. Seeing how best, what technology out there that can facilitate that and just moving forward, right? Um, we we still have our office location. Um, the person still go there um, every now and again, does for change. But we, we have asked ourselves this year, is that something that we need to retire? Do we, we do we need to say, hey, do we really need an office? Um, it's still something that we can't really re 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 discussing, but we may keep it because as I said earlier, some persons just want a change. And for us not to pay them, pay for them to use our co-working space and we're paying for, you know, right now the spare rent. So it's really just taking the lessons, as I said, how we can work collaboratively, or we can give the best experiences and moving on to 2021. And just hoping that this pandemic um, does not, uh, does not, so I, I say, <laughs> does not make too much of an impact whereby we can't recover from it. We just learning, you know, we can't see the, we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, but we're just doing what we need to do to get there. Um, for us, it helped some organizations who were not looking to transform or saying, hey, how can we do so? How can we put on, um, how can we carry our business online? How we can work, allow our team members to work from anywhere? So it, we, there's a benefit to it. Yeah, there's there's not, well, some persons are suffering, but it's really how you re respond to a situation that determines how you move forward, right? So we're trying to, respond to the best way possible for our team members and customers. You you, you enable them, um, Ryan? Yes, enable their best. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, what, one thing, Oshin, and Ryan, Ryan, can I drop a memory with that, is that like we used to have like a stand-up call. They still have it. I don't go to all of them, but, but you know, these guys are there just talking like at nine o'clock and they're just talking about random stuff, just talking about <laughs> random things. And, you know, that's the whole company on this call, you know, financial the finance person is just like, you know how much money that is? I'm just like, well, <laughs> I mean, that's just their way to, um, to kind of, you know, relax and stuff. So, um, you know, we allow that and, um, and I've even said to people, I was like, you know, you guys can actually, well, now the pandemic we kind of kicking, kicking apart, but before it was really kicking, kicking, I was just like, you know, you guys could literally go to some other country and just work. Like, mm -hmm. you know, nobody's expecting to see you um, back in the office. You know, you could go to Colombia or Costa Rica or any places, just go, go work. I mean, it's just the same. I don't think anybody has taken me up on it, but um like for me like i've traveled in the pandemic and um i was at work early and somebody was just like they were wondering how they saw me log they saw like a uh, my location for app that we have location said i was in florida and they were on a how come <laughs> but that's because i went to florida and nobody nobody missed a beat so you literally can be anywhere you could go mobe ochi and just rent out a, a villa or a, a house down there and just 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 work so i think i think it's an exciting time for all of us you know for those of us who always want to live by the seaside or to chill out in a resort so no no it's the time to do it because nobody your boss don't want to be at work anymore so 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 live it up is what i would say 
Uh, all right. Thank you very much, Dalton and Ryan. Um, I do agree with the points that you made, and I definitely will try out some of them, especially, you know, um, probably go out of Villa and do work um, one of these days. Um, so we've basically reached the end of the the right discussion panel for the panelists. Um, so the next um, step, which we're going to take like 15 minutes to open the floor to anyone who has questions from the audience, um, you can raise it on and uh, unmute you or you can unmute the mic and ask. But um, in the meantime, while someone is asking a question or if any of you guys have a question, there will be a poll that will be um, published and we ask that you, you know, quickly do it. It's just to review this meeting and how insightful it was. Um, otherwise from that, if anyone has qu any questions for Ryan Delton or myself, uh, we can go ahead with the hands or ask it in the chat. A matter of fact, Mark Anthony, um, all they asked a question from early on. Um, what are your thoughts on mobile development um, space in Jamaica and globally? Also, what would you recommend for someone to do to get more acquainted with e-commerce and online trans transactions in Jamaica, Jamaican context? Okay, well, for, for me, mobile mobile is huge, and um, uh, I would I would say though, you know, building the app is one thing. Um, uh, running a business around it is another thing. Um, so, um, you know, mobile it can go wrong. Like the penetration for mobile devices is massive here in Jamaica, and there are so many problems to be solved that. Um, everybody don't have to run it on the same um, the same solution to solve a problem, right? Um, so it's worth the investment. And, um, you know, if you're looking for a payday, um, you know, you can make serious money, um, you know, Jamaica or US. Um, and let me just kind of fly off, go off the rails here. I, um, I think that um, here in Jamaica, we kind of have to kind of have the mindset that you know that we can build world world class products and, and push those products into spaces like North America and and Europe where where, where there's a lot more um, there's a lot more money to be made. So um, you know, so just investing that time and effort into the mobile mobile development space. Um, partnering with a company or people that can actually help to fund it, uh, fund the development, fund the marketing, and so on. I think you can be very successful. Um, Oshim, what was your second question again? Um, you had asked. Um, um, also, oh, e commerce. Yes. Yeah, e commerce. Well, that's the thing about Jamaica that I don't like is that the, the knowledge is not as widely available. Um, you have a dig very hard to get some of the information but there's first Atlantic commerce which is the main one so if you go on their website they have the developer um, documentation is right there that you can download um, you just need an account to be able to test and so on but you know you may need some money for that part um, yeah uh, but then you have other entities that allow you to do transactions here um, but I would say if you get FAC, NCV, um, or Scotiabank, you can get access there. But the, the SDK is not free, so I would just say talk to talk to somebody. Um, maybe somebody needs to, to run a do a workshop on that, how to build an e-commerce application, um, and somebody expose the SDK to everybody so that they can see it and go from there. Okay, I agree with that. I think mean, we also, um, Oshane has done some work, some presentations on the payment gateways that are available as well, um, including the developer package from um, Sajik. So if we could make that available after this meeting again for those who haven't seen it as yet. 
All right. Um, wait, another question um, that was asked. Well, it's a matter of fact, a matter of fact, this was all the answer. Um, what are your thoughts on remote work in Jamaica? Um, will companies stay with remote work after Corona or will things go back to how they were? I think Delta and you, you basically said it's ill to stay, uh, which I think all of us might definitely agree with that. Um, for the first part, uh, remote work in Jamaica, do you have any additional thoughts regarding that? And like, for example, um, how has it, for example, you know, impacted Jamaica in the sense of workforce, people getting on and people, you know, doing more uh, remote work, job opportunities, or, you know, how it's impacted Jamaica? Ryan, you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. So it's it has, I believe that um, what it has done is now given persons an opportunity that say may not necessarily have to come to Kingston to find an, an, uh, uh, a role that they can contribute to. Or, or um, they can do it from Montego Bay, they can do it from Ochi. So it gives you now persons an opportunity to really say hey you know i see a role in kingston i can get that role there right um i can give example i have a client who i put with them a team member who they're they're working from um turks and vehicles so i had another one um who was working with a, um, a team member who was studying in china so there is always opportunities with remote work and that's what it has um, facilitated and impacted the workforce. We see NCB um, starting their freelancing um, services, working that persons can work from home, persons can contribute their services temp um, temporarily, right, or just for a particular need. So it definitely has um, enabled the gig economy here in Jamaica even um, that much faster. Listen, they work remote work from anywhere is here to stay. I think what may happen is that organizations may have a hybrid approach where they say, okay, then team members, you can work um, from home this week. Another one, say, come into the office or, you know, just make it whereby it's flexible. So it's something that um, in February 2020, organizations were saying, no, they can't do it. it can never be done. It's not secure. We don't trust our team members. The work doesn't allow them to do that. And on March the 13th, 14th, we got calls, hey, how do you enable? How do you get this done for us in two days? So it's really here looking forward, whatever however it looks like, it's not gonna, we're not gonna go back to March the 9th, 2020. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Um, oh, one more question. Um, in your opinion, as a recent graduate, um, what are some of some easier entry level technology to pursue to get the foot in the door? I know you spoke on picking a niche and going in that and expanding, but what entry level technologies are a good place to get experience in future job? Um, I think I will take this question. All right, so entry level um, web development, um, strictly is one of the easiest um uh, you know industry to get in um same for mobile development so when you come on to web development all right entry level stuff um it's easy to learn like wordpress content management system and so forth but at the end of the day um you need to look at the fundamentals um De delta and um spoke about earlier both delta and i spoke about you know um the the values the the 
like can identify a problem how to solve it and the steps to you know solving that problem so um and that applies to literally um all different levels so even if it's entry level for like WordPress development, um, mobile um, development. If you're using Flutter, Flutter is a great entry level technology that you can learn, um, build a, a mobile app from whether it's a game or like a transactional based app. It's a great, great entry level solution, um, software or technology to use. But at the same time, is um the project that you're working on um what is the value of that project um what how do you work out the solution um to you know make that product or project that you're working on um you know effective in the sense that it deliver what it's supposed to um it's doing what it's supposed to and the code base is very substantial and you know quality so um yes there are technologies that you can learn uh, for to wordpress um uh, some php uh, framework like laravel um a lot of companies in jamaica are um it was .NET, some Java Spring and so forth. But at the same time, if you're going for like an entry level job, um, know your basics. Um, whether it's web, mobile, know the basics, know how to explain um, how, what is the problem, how to solve it, um, and the tools that, you know, companies generally use, like for example, I, I for one always tell people this is something all developers must know. Git. Know the basic of Git. Know the basic of you know communicating with your, with teams, whether it's through um a project management tool or so forth. Um the, the learning the technology and then using the tools that help you to communicate with um others to build on those build those projects are things that you will definitely need from entry level to an advanced um level developer or um data science or so forth but if you're just starting um web development um is the easiest thing to go in um mm -hmm. probably um laravel um not not laravel sorry wordpress or if you're interested in mobile um development there is react native and uh, um flutter which are the two easiest you know mobile development frameworks on the market if you're looking towards android development meaning using kotlin or java to build a mobile app um that's more intermediate and it will take you more time to learn. So look at what look at what is popular. People are saying that you know it's very easy to learn. And then once you identify this, just take a stab at it. Try it out for yourself. If it easily you know grab your attention, you easily can you learn something and just do something amazing with it yeah continue to learn that until you reach some form of intermediate level or mastery and then move on and learn something new and or something else but yeah that's my take on it delta and ryan if you want to add more okay. a, a quick fundamental for me just three things object-oriented programming um you can't practice that over and over and over and over and over. If you do that, then you can flip between any object-oriented programming language. It, once you think in objects, it's way easier. Um, I, I, I don't, I'm not, so I'm not a web developer, not, not, I mean, I can do stuff, but I'm not awesome at it. But, um, so object-oriented programming, um, clean code, there's a book out there called Clean Code. Just read that book, understand how to do exception handling fairly well understand how the web works http um and yeah i think and then do some little reading on um architecture and design just some reading on that 
if you start at object oriented and keying into either .NET or um, or Java, um, you have you have more than enough job out there. You can there's if you get okay with that. Meaning, if you come into an interview and you actually can explain to me how the how, what the difference is the implement between an interface and an abstract class, um, then you know you're gone. You and you can explain other things, then you you. I'll say are you trainable, um, but if you can if you can't explain that, then um, you know, or if you're not a web guy, um, then um, I, I start to I, I realize that you have a, a curve to come up. So I would say if you just choose that, like that's like a common basic thing that you can practice without even having to learn all of the different frameworks and stuff like that. Just um, Object oriented and even MVC is also a good thing to just just ramp up on. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you, Delta. And another question. Um, two more questions after this, um, and then we're going to wrap up. Um, another question: Is there a demand for ReactJS slash experts in Jamaica? Um. React, yes. Yeah. Express, um, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure either. React for sure. React JS, um, begging for workers. Yeah, definitely. React is in high demand. Java, script, Java, uh, are are definitely in high demand. And um, that net as well. Yep. Must get a job. Any of those, <laughs> any of those you don't know, not you must get a job. <laughs> Guaranteed. Vertical high for sure. Um, no. PB. <laughs> so um, we, we will hire you too. So Delta and, and like Ryan, what are some of the um, technologies you tend to use um, at your workplace? No. So, yeah, .NET for you, um, of course, uh, but what else do you tend to use? Popular one right now is, um, you guys can look into that. Um, just look at cloud, on the cloud side. Um, a lot of cloud native um, uh, framework, not frameworks, because uh, you have the React and so on, but then you have these, um, uh, I guess call them a framework, that's a better term. Um, look at um i spoke about graph graphql um it's very popular um we got graph then you look at the no sql databases you're looking at um serverless um functions um like your i think azure functions and you have your um lambda functions on aws like those are super popular uh, right now, um, so anything cloud, um, you will you will get a lot of opportunities where that's concerned. So um, yeah, and then all these other frameworks, then then they plug into the cloud. So so that's what I would say. All right, thank you, Dot and Ryan. Yeah, really, um, cloud services. Um, we hope this we can help organizations, um, but organizations are looking to uh, AWS or Microsoft Azure, um, Azure in terms of developing in that space. So you, you're looking for persons who can understand um, how to deliver products and services there. Um, Java, JavaScript, those are two. And you know, uh, particle presence is that net place. So if you're there, you're gonna can go there for sure. But um, yeah, but those are really what we're working to work on now. Cloud um, services. Uh, right. and, and yeah, that's what we're looking to do. All right. Um thank you, Ryan and Delton. All right. Um one last question and then afterwards we will basically follow up with like closing remarks and so forth from uh, both of you. So the question that Mark Anthony asks, which is for both of you, um, how did you start out as a business owner? I think you mentioned it earlier, um, um Delton and Ryan, but um 
I'll continue without how did you start out as a business owner business owners uh meaning before your companies became what they are today what are the what was the initial phase of that of starting up i guess this, this is a question for you know anyone who's interested in kickstarting a tech company um, so I'll, I'll start. So it's it's really just one determining what you are looking to offer to the space and determining if there's a need for the services you offer, right? So um, it's once you get, you have the idea, say, okay, then how you can monetize this, how you can really get persons to pay for, this, for what you are doing, right? Um, looking to see how basically can make it as formalized as possible. So even if you are an individual, right, go and get your your your, your um, taxes in order, your business registered, everything that it was it was key for me to do that for the organization. And I implore persons who are looking to get into that space to be um, formalized, right? Um, you're, you're going to miss out on opportunities if you're trying to beat the man and not get um, get that get that all above board, right? Um, it's starting a business across, anywhere across the world is hard, but you have to find the team, a good team. Team is important, so recruiting, um, partnering. Don't be afraid to partner with somebody to build a product or a service. So if you have an idea and you think I need help with it, don't, don't, be, don't be afraid to say, hey, bring on somebody and you and them build it together and it's go out there and sell it. Um, don't be afraid to be a salesperson. Everyone, you, you, you can't start a business and you can't know how to sell. You need to sit, stand, um, sit across somebody and say, hey, here's a service I'm offering. This is what it does. This is how it's going to bring value. So if you want to start a business, don't believe you say, oh, I can't sell. If you can't sell, don't start a business. If you can't sell, learn how to sell, right? Um, and that's what it is, really. Just find a good team, become formalized in terms of the organization, and um, learn how to sell. That's how it is. And it's going to be hard, but if you love it, it's going to be worth it. Yeah. No yeah, man, I agree. Definitely everything that Ryan said, true, especially the formalization part. I think there is this myth, there's a misconception, and I had the myth when I started out in business, um, that you can pay one bag of taxes and it's going to kill you and you. You actually work out better um, if you're formalized. Um, you know, GCT is, you don't really pay GCT. You know, you charge for GCT, any expenses that you have that you have that carry GCT offset it against what you collected and that kind of thing. So sometimes at the end of the month you're not really paying much. Um, you're paying some, but you're not paying much for GCT. Income tax at the end of the year, um, you know, is off of your net profit. But then that's after you already pay yourself your salary. So you make a salary, some money leave back as profit. The government take twenty five percent, or if you are paying the employee the things of one time, the government gives you, you pay 17.5%. You, you can't lose um, going the formalized way. So I want to back up that point with Ryan. And as Ryan said, you have to find um, a problem that, um, a problem that needs to be solved that people are going to pay for. I can tell you right now, as a business owner, there are a ton load of problems that I would love somebody to solve and I would pay them for it. Right, <laughs> like I would, I'd probably pay, depending on the problem, pay a service a hundred thousand dollars a month to get rid of this problem that we have. So I don't have to think about it. I literally would pay that. So there is money out there, and there are a lot of people who will pay money um, if you can um, solve a problem for them. Um, and then you don't know, you know, there are things to these entrepreneurial things that talk about business canvas and all these other things and how to come to the conclusion whether this is a good product or not. 
Um, so, yeah, and somebody's saying I've limited yourself to Jamaica. So, um, so I would say, um, you know, make it solve a problem. How I started was I worked for a company um, in about the place in different countries. They gave me a parachute back to Jamaica, a soft landing, meaning I wanted to come back home and they allowed me to come back to Jamaica and help to recruit for them. I helped to kind of help them in setting up their um, their organization here in Jamaica, which they eventually did. And um, while I was here um, doing that and just hanging around, somebody saw me and said, oh, they have work that I need to get done. and. They gave me like a contract to do it. And I was there writing some code, some old language, but I wrote code anyway. And one of my former bosses met somebody in in a hotel as he was down here in Jamaica. And he said, this lady is looking for developers. Am I, did I lose internet? Hello? No, we can hear you. Oh, oh, can... oh your background, you're muted, Doshina. I used to that coping <laughs> sound. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm muted. No, no, no. problem. I, it, it it was helping me. But um um so that person said, Oh well, they have some business in another country and they need some developers to write some code. I was like, all right, well, I register a company and that was literally how, how I started. And as Ryan said, the selling part is important. I'm not very um sociable, but you know, once I get in the right um, environment and we're going to talk about solving a problem i can't sell you something i know i can do it so part of that is you also have to just make up your mind say you know if you don't sell nobody's gonna pay you so you have to walk up to some people talk to them even though you're really not the talkative type and tell them what you have to offer and and one thing i love about um this business in general is that people will be honest with you and say you know what you're selling i don't want that service i know a man who may want it but i think what you need to do is do these other things so the more you talk to people is the more feedback you get and the more you can tweak your product until you get that right product market fit and um and then you go from there so i would say don't be afraid to to um to go ahead but um go in an incubator and start there is what i'd advise you first and um, take all the help you can get there before um, and pay yourself a salary before actually um, trying to go out there and, and launch it, launch it big basically. So that's what I would say. Fine. Um, thank you, Delta and I. And there's one last question. Um, so I guess this is a good question. So I'm not going to skip it. What are some of these big problems people would spend a lot of money on to solve. So, yeah. Whole heap, whole <laughs> heap of problem, whole heap of problem. Let me, let me tell you an easy one. And I'll, I'll throw this one out. It's something I always wanted to build, but I never built it myself. I'm telling you, every single month, um, there are bills that come into different organizations, um, JPS, all these bills. Um, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm just, I'm throwing it out here because you guys are developers. I always thought I'd build it, but it never happened. Once the bill is within a certain threshold for me, um, I'm going to pay it. So if JPS is below 100,000, for example, for the company, just pay the bill. Um, if it's above 100,000, then um, I definitely want to be notified that um, the bill is over 100,000, for example. So for us, we have a lot of bills coming in and for each of the bills, somebody has to take the bills, go and pay my store, whatever, um, pay all these bills, whatever. <clears throat> that wouldn't be 100,000 for that. But easily, if somebody had a software that would take all the bills, get the total, do they fall within the threshold that was set up? It already has my credit card on file and it automatically goes ahead and pays all the bills for me. Yeah, I'd, 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 I'd pay. $30 a month for that service. Um, it means that nobody in my company has to do that because it's all of that is automated. So imagine you could probably get, maybe there are a hundred or, you know, a thousand other companies um, that would want a, a similar-ish service 
to kind of solve those type of problems. You know, I'm just saying, you know, you can, there's so many different um, things. That was the easier one. Um, for the 100 grand, um, well, we're not in the office now, but there, there are things that are mundane and routine that we have to keep doing manually that the cost to do it um, takes away from um, us actually being able to do to do the main thing that we do, which is actually um, write software. Like uh, recently I was talking to Virtus to say we would want to manage firewall. We could actually configure the fi a firewall in our office ourselves, you know, we could install it, but guess what? We, that's not what we do. It's it's too much to do it. So we would be willing to pay Virtus to, to manage our firewall. So I'm saying you can, f you can look for things that people are, you, like in the US, people are dog walkers, for example. <laughs> you say a man walk with 10 dogs around him. Th that's an example of people paying for service. So um, if you want more specifics, you can probably have a, a, a seminar or something to dig down on some problems that I have. Yeah, right. so for me, there is there is a lot. You have two types of problems. You have problems that persons, you know, possibly can aspire you have problems that is for a spe specific group of companies or um, your needs. So it's really what you're looking for. I, I always look at how can you improve efficiency for uh, a group of persons? How can you say to them, listen, you used to do this in this amount of time, would something where you do it in half that be something of value to you, right? So you look at industries where they say, okay, they're still using possibly paper. And someone has to come down and look and say, all right, then yes, we can um, we can say um, sell okay a paper to what they get. Look to see that. So medical, I say medical um, offices know. You go in, you still see a lot of them using paper to, um, we call it here now, accept appointments. You still, still use, see a lot of them using um, paper to accept health cards. You see a, a lot of them in terms of how they, how they, the process re their engagement, how that is going to be impacted with COVID now, how that is going to be impacted in terms of receiving and making payment, right? That is just one particular, but there are many other scenarios where persons, so you may not have one particular customer paying a um, hundred thousand, but you may have a hundred thousand paying ten thousand dollars or one thousand dollars for it, right? So it's really how you can address that particular need for a group of persons. Know the business, study what they what they need, and then work from there back to the solution what you're looking to get to give them you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah all right thank mm -hmm. you delta and ryan so we are about to wrap up um before we go i must um, say yeah the career in uh, careers in tech, um, as Latifa pointed out, it's literally a monthly event. So the next um, event um, is in February, um, the fourth Tuesday. That's the day we tend to um, keep it around this time, um, 6 p.m. Um, apart from that, um, if you want any information regarding um, Jamaican developers, what we do, I joining the join the community and so forth you can go to um community.jamaicans.dev and it's a discussion forum and there's also a telegram um the channel and group that we discuss all type of topic about taking jamaica in the caribbean and so forth um apart from that we'll post the recording for this meeting on meetup.com which is where we host most of like the the meetup meetup from jamaican developers and the other communities that we work with tech communities um and uh, as well as i'll 
give back the foot both Ryan and Delta and just in case you want to you know say any last words before last word before um, you go about the company if you have any job opening events or so forth upcoming this is time to you know take it home um for having me um really appreciate the opportunity to share with um your audience in terms of remote workforce um looking forward to other great events i'm always willing to assist and participate in in um, sharing the information that was shared with me so i wish everyone the best um stay safe continue to aspire to be your very best and um, if you you always can visit our website www.vertisgm.com for any openings we do have please follow the organization on social um our socials instagram linkedin facebook to see any openings there and know who we are and um, just stay safe Yeah, and thanks and thank you thank you again everybody for having me it was really good to be here and to talk about this topic um and what i didn't mention was that i was actually i think i did i recruit i used to recruit for like a, a company out of the u.s so um you know just letting you guys know that you you have the the talent uh, you have the ability you just need to just invest the time to develop your skill sets basically um well, since since Ryan told, put his website out there and he's selling <laughs> I'll just say but yeah you can you can check out our website also on particularpresence.com and you can um um definitely um you know reach out to us um hopefully this year we should be having a few events uh that um so a few events that you may be interested in so um we we'll look forward to to seeing you all um yeah so much to talk about but um i think this is a very first a good first first step and um you know i wish you guys all the best with everything that you that you're doing and um thank you Latif for she and for inviting me to this event I actually actually enjoy it and i enjoy the questions so just keep up the good work Hey, we've reached the end of this video and I just have to say thank you so much for watching. I know these videos can get pretty long but I do hope it was informative, fun and insightful. If you like this video, don't forget to click subscribe and hit the notifications bell in the description below. Once again, thank you for watching. See you in the next video and blessings from the Jamaican Developers team.